The next example that we'll do, so that's our first example. Our next example will be d over dx of cos x cubed. So this might look like one term here, but this is actually going to be chain rule. So we'll have to take the derivative of the cos part followed by the derivative of the inside of x cubed. So this will be equal, the derivative of cos is negative sine of x cubed. So you leave the inside as it is to begin with, and then you multiply it by the derivative of the inside, 3x squared. So this is equal to negative 3x squared sine of x cubed. The next example will be d over dx of sine of 5x divided by tan of x. So now we can use the quotient rule here. Remember the quotient rule, rule is u prime v minus u v prime divided by v squared. So and this is when u is the numerator and v is the denominator. So in this case, our u is sine of 5x, and our v is tan of x. So this will be equal to the derivative of the top will be sine of 5x times 5, because I have to take the derivative of the inside, times the denominator, tan x, minus sine of 5x sec squared of x divided by tan squared x. In this case, um, you could simplify this a tiny bit, but not much. Now we'll do a fourth example d over dx of x sine x squared. Here we have product rule, so we have x times sine of x squared, so that's product rule, and we also have chain rule, so we have to take the derivative of the inside here. So the product rule means we take the product rule, remember uv is equal to u prime v plus v prime u. So in this case our u is x, our v is sine of x squared, so now we have the derivative of x becomes 1 times sine of x squared plus the derivative of sine x squared. So this will be cos of x squared times 2x times x. This one can then get simplified to be um, sine x squared plus 2x squared cos x squared. So those are the basic derivative rules that you'll be using all the time. These rules will be used, um, the more fluent that you're, you are in these rules, the better off you'll be in this course. You'll constantly be using them. Um, after this video, there'll be some sample problems for you to practice these. In this video, we are going to cover higher order derivatives and implicit derivatives. So higher, deri higher order derivatives are, they don't change the technique that you'll do to solve the derivatives. It just means that you take, you might take the derivative more than once. So let's say you have a function, you have a distance x say for example, and it's a function of time. If you take the derivative of that function of time, so that would be f prime of t, this would be considered the first order derivative, the first derivative. If you take the derivative again, this would be f double prime of t, this would be called the second derivative. You could also denote this one, the first derivative would be dx over dt. 
The second derivative would be called d squared x over dt squared. So those are just two different notations. All you're doing is you do take the derivative once. If you need more information, you take the derivative again. A real world application of this would be if you're looking at the change of x with respect to time, so dx over dt, that's your velocity. So you might take the first derivative to come up with your velocity term. But if you want to know how the velocity is changing with respect to time, you would take the derivative of velocity, which would give you your acceleration. And that's generally what we're doing in this course. We'll take the first derivative to, use, to get to velocity and the second derivative to get to acceleration. Another type of derivative that arises in this course is implicit derivatives. Now, implicit derivatives are what you have to do when you can't get your equation into a standard form. So, so far, we've looked at equations. We've had x is equal to a function of time, and that's equal to t squared plus t. And so here, it's very, we've separated our, um, our independent variables, which are time, and our dependent variable, which is x. And so then we can take the, de the derivative separately. But sometimes what happens is that you're not able to separate those variables as easily. And then you have what's called implicit derivatives. If we have an equation that looks like this, x squared plus t squared equals 1, there's not a way to easily manipulate this into a form where we can separate x as a distinct function of time. And in this case, we use what's called implicit differentiation. So the way that you do this is, let's say we are looking for dx over dt. So we so the question is find dx over dt. We take the derivative with respect to time of both sides and then we solve out what that value would be. So I'll do an example and then I'll explain each step. So here we would take d over dt of this entire side and because it's a sum we can take both separately. So we'll do d over dt and I'll actually do the t squared term first, plus d over dt of x squared is equal to d over dt of 1. So, so the t squared here is just standard. The derivative of t squared with respect to time is just power rule, so that's 2t. Now over here, this is where it's tricky. You have to be careful. You can't assume that this x is a constant value because we don't know if x is changing with time so we have to assume that it is and so we have to use the chain rule here and what that looks like is we first take the derivative of this term with respect to x and then we multiply that by the derivative of x with respect to time so that looks like this we would have derivative with respect to x of x squared times the derivative of x with respect to time. Now here you can see, now we were only taking the derivative with respect to time, but when we do d over dx times dx over dt, these effectively cancel and you're left with just d over dt. So we haven't changed the derivative that we're doing here. We've just manipulated the equation so that we have the chain rule. And so this captures here how dx is changing with dt. If we assume here, if we just did d over dt of x squared and we treated x as not changing with time, this would just become zero and we're not able to solve for how it's changing with time. So even though we're taking d over dt and we can't see that x is changing with time here, you have to know that it might be, and so we have to do the chain rule here. Now here, this is equal, the derivative 
of 1 with respect to time. Now this is just a constant value, so this is going to be equal to 0. Then we'll just rearrange this equation. Sorry, first we have to solve this. So we have 2t plus, this is just the power rule again, so 2x times dx over dt equals 0. Then if we rearrange this, we can say dx over dt is equal to negative 2t divided by 2x. And now we've solved for how x is changing with respect to time, even though we weren't, we weren't able to put it into the form, the easy form that we had before. The real trick about implicit derivatives here is this part here, is understanding that even though we can't see the t here, we can't assume that x is not changing with time. And so we use the chain rule. We take the derivative of x with respect to itself first, multiplied by dx over dt.